how many people here had any idea that our founders, uh, the people at this time, would, would take an African American and bury them with the full military rights and honors? Anybody here believe that before just now? This is good stuff. And again, it's not to say that slavery and, and the Jim Crow laws, et cetera, didn't happen. They did, but we got taught that in school. What we didn't get taught was the positive side of that aspect of history. We did so many programs, but there was a lot more we could have done. I mean, this could go forever. We didn't do anything about all the Jewish founding fathers. Mordecai Sheftel was a Jewish patriot who led the forces in, uh, across Georgia. Uh, Francisco Salvador was the first Jewish patriot killed in the American Revolution, was ambushed by the British and the Indians and killed. If you go to Chicago to the business district, you will see there a statue of three great folks in the American Revolution, George Washington, Robert Morris, and Haim Solomon. And Robert Morris and Haim Solomon were the two financiers that gave Washington what he needed to fight the war financially one a Jew and one a Christian, Washington holding the hands of both of them. And another aspect we hear nothing about is the young people. I mean, the fact that you take a John Quincy Adams at eight years old with his musket out going after the British. Well, you look at Andrew Jackson, he was already a military prisoner of war at 11 years old from fighting in the Revolution. Uh, you take someone like uh, James Iredell, at 17 years old, he was the chief financial officer over North Carolina. So there's just so much history we didn't get into that we could have gotten into on Founders Fridays. Faith, hope, and charity. Why we matched Sam Adams, George Washington, and Benjamin Franklin up with those virtues. Ahead. As a homeschool mom, I used a lot of the material that Glenn presents on Founders Friday. It's just been a great way to have some good discussion on American history. I'm Jim Darty from New Jersey, and Glenn, I love watching Founders Fridays. We're currently fighting a war on terror, and this lasted for a number of years, but most Americans have no clue that this is deja vu. This is actually round two in the war on terror. We actually sent four military expeditions overseas to the same region where we're fighting now to fight Muslim terrorism back then. We spent literally 32 years fighting Muslim terrorism from 1784 in the Continental Congress through the presidency of George Washington and John Adams and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison up until 1816, for 32 years we fought Muslim terrorism. Matter of fact, George Washington by 1795, the seventh year of his administration, 16% of the federal budget was dedicated to the war on terror. Our first three diplomats that were sent by America to negotiate with Muslim terrorists were John Adams and Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin. And you read their letters back to the State Department and you'd think it's coming out of Afghanistan or Iraq today. You're watching a special look back at Founders Fridays. You might remember we kicked off the series with this man right here, Sam Adams. Faith, Sam Adams. Most people know him as the beer guy. But Sam Adams had faith in God, faith in our country, and faith that there would be freedom. He was the delegate from Massachusetts. He had been involved in the cause of independence from the very beginning. He had, in, by this time, earned the title Father of the American Revolution. Didn't make him popular with the British. The British virtually destroyed his home. He had to leave his family for long periods of time. He was in continual danger of capture and death, always. But Adams had a faith in God, and he had a faith in the cause of liberty, and that's what was needed faith. He spoke to his fellow congressmen. This is after we lost in Brandywine and things were looking bleak and Congress gets together and he stood in front of Congress and he said, gentlemen, your spirits appear oppressed with the weight of public calamities. He then told them, you don't show that to the American people. He told Congress, quote, our affairs, it is said, are desperate. If this be our language, then they are indeed. If we wear long faces, long faces are going to become fashionable. The eyes of the people are upon us. Sam Adams knew that if Congress openly showed their fear to the people, the cause of liberty would be over because people will follow and say, it was like when George Washington wept. I don't think our leader should be crying. He also told them, now imagine, these are the people that signed the 
Declaration of Independence, these are the brave, brave people. He said, we have proclaimed to the world our determination to die freemen rather than slaves. We have appealed to heaven for the justice of our cause. And in heaven, we have placed our trust. How great is that? How many of us have that faith now where we can say, I trust you. I trust you. Our cause is just. Ira, you are, you are here because of, of your book. It changed my, uh, my course. Ira Stoll wrote uh, Samuel Adams' A Life. Um, and I read this, and I remember bringing it in and saying, my gosh, I'd bring it into work every day, and I'd read it to people, and I'd go, did, did, did you know this? And uh, those are my paintings. These are copies of them, but that is the, re the reason why Sam Adams' faith is because of your book. It's amazing. Um, we also have David Barton here from Wall Builders, um, and I want to spend some time uh, just getting to know this guy a little bit. First of all, did you know who you were going to find when you started doing research for your book? Well, I had a vague idea that he was one of the most steadfast of the Founding Fathers, but I really didn't know what motivated it. And you're right, it really was the faith. And as I got into it, I saw that Samuel Adams really believed that God was on the side of the Americans and that they were like the Israelites fleeing slavery in Egypt. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. David, but he wasn't unique in that, was he? But he was probably the leader at the time, or the most... He, he was probably the leader. The, the British actually called him the puppet master, and they knew that he was behind things, and that's why they wanted his body. I mean, that order you read was, go find him, find Hancock, kill him. If we can get these guys killed, we're going we're to save this thing. Now, he is a guy... We, we're separation of church and state. We're not a religious... And, and that is the big lie here. Yeah. We are. These guys all defended religion. Yeah. They, they would go because people would say, well, no, you're not going to be that religion. Yeah. But... They said, no, no, no. You can be as religious as you want. That's right. You don't, don't go after another religion. It's yeah. not about one religion. We need to be religious people. But he wrote the Massachusetts Constitution, yeah. or he was involved in the Massachusetts Constitution. He was one of the foremost writers. He and his second cousin, John Adams, and, and Hancock were really the principal guys behind that. And John Adams is the one who wrote the foreword for all of this, but Sam had him in his fingers all over this. I am Samuel Adams. I was named after the boy prophet, and I'm related to him. And every day I get told, oh, you're related to that beer guy. And it, <laughs> it, it infuriates me. Like, there's, there's never really a good, quick answer. Like, what, what's, like, the defining thing that he did? Because nobody knows. People say he's the, he was the president, which is, people yeah. don't know their history at all in America. So what is it? What's the one thing I say to these people? What did he do? A uh, couple things. One, can I respond to the, mm -hmm. the beer thing? He owned what was called a malt house. And malt back then is not beer today. And by the way, that didn't do well. He didn't do well in any business he had, but he had a malt house. But according to founding father Benjamin Rush, who's, who's called the father of temperance, he said neither malt nor wine nor beer could you get drunk on in the founding era. They, they didn't, it had just enough alcohol to kill the bugs in the water, and that was it. So it wasn't even a beer that we consider today. That's a complete misnomer. They've stuck his name on something that, that really was not his. Uh, the thing you can say about him is there is no America as the United States without the leadership of Sam Adams. That's why they called him the father of the American Revolution. Next, this guy, Hope. You're watching the Glenn Beck Special on Founders Fridays. More to come in a moment. One of the reasons that Founders Fridays did so well is that people are hungry for their own history, just like they're now hungry for the Constitution. I mean, look across the nation, Tea Party's popping up, 9-12 groups, everybody wants to read the Constitution. That, that's part of history. I mean, we got groups now looking at reading the Federalist Papers. We haven't done that in 100 years. So we're really hungry for our history, and Founders Friday's really filled that void. You probably know the next Founding Father as my favorite. Most people will say George Washington is one of the best presidents, but they don't know why. George Washington was truth. To me, the only kind of hope that there is comes from truth. He was, at the time, known as the indispensable man. When George Washington was around, things were a mess. And he was the indispensable man because nobody trusted anybody. All the states were arguing with each other. Nobody, you couldn't sell anything across the border. The whole thing was falling apart. 
Here's George Washington, a man who at 16 was out surveying land for his country, which was then Great Britain. All he wanted to do was go to Mount Vernon and be a farmer. His countries, Great Britain and then the United States of America, had him serving for year after year after year after year. After he won the Revolutionary War, he went back to be that farmer in Mount Vernon. In 1791, things started to fall apart. And they came knocking at his door and said, George, we need you because the whole thing is falling apart. I'm paraphrasing, but I think it was pretty close to, have I not yet done enough for my country? No. I think what I like about George Washington is most of the choices he made, he didn't want to make. Most of the things he did, he didn't want to do. He was revered for it. He was revered. And I think it's because they knew that in the end, he didn't matter to him. It was just doing the right thing. That's what mattered. I made George Washington faith, hope, and charity. Um, I made Washington hope because I was trying to figure out why that Obama hope doesn't work and because it's false hope. It's not telling you the truth. And I mean, it's, uh, it's ironic to me that we make up a lie about I shall not tell a lie on George Washington when there's so many great truth stories with him. Would you say that he's the best yeah. example of hope? Can I answer that question? Yeah. That? Um, you hit the nail right on the head, Glenn. There is no figure in the history of this nation that represents hope as well as George Washington. Uh, and, and just let me give you a couple of reasons why I believe that. One, we've already been talking about. And it is so astonishing to me that we have uh, writers today who say that not only that the founders were deists, but in some cases atheists. Now, George Washington was the most vocal but virtually all of them said that the reason that this country was created was because of the intervention of God. And uh, nobody said it more often or more effectively than George Washington. But the other thing is this, and, and if that, by the way, um, when you consider who these men were and what they accomplished, you know, these were the most brilliant and the most insightful mm -hmm. political philosophers and statesmen in the world. In one place, at one time in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and here they're all saying it Same was thing. God who used us to do this. And, and you have to ask yourself, were they all wrong? 